With the authority of the Council, I shall now confer the degree of Doctor of the University. I call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Glyn Davis, to read the citation. Acting Chancellor Henry Smerdon, Your Excellency, Governor Peter Arneson, Your Grace, Archbishop John Battersby, Doctor of the University Yvonne Bain. Jim O'Sullivan was born in Kingaroy in 1939. His career in law enforcement began early. He was sworn in as a member of the Queensland Police Force, as it then was, at the age of 20 and commenced his duties as a constable at Mitchell in southwestern Queensland. During his career in law enforcement, spanning over 40 years, Jim O'Sullivan has performed duty at every rank in the Queensland Police. His long-standing service was recognised by the award of the Police Long Service and Good Conduct Medal in 1981. He was promoted to Inspector of Police in 1986. The following year, he was appointed the Director of Operations in charge of investigation at the Fitzgerald Commission of Inquiry into Corruption, and two years later was promoted to Detective Superintendent. In 1990, he became the Commander of the North Coast Region and was awarded the Australian Police Medal for Exemplary Police Service. Commissioner Tony Fitzgerald, in his report on the Inquiry into Corruption, recommended Jim O'Sullivan as police commissioner. After a short period as a deputy commissioner of police, he was appointed police commissioner in 1992 and held that position until his retirement in 2000. His professionalism, dedication, leadership and vision for the police service drove the changes that took place in the post-Fitzgerald period. Under his leadership, the Queensland Police Service made a strong commitment to high ethical standards, increasing staff numbers both in policing and supporting services, and made significant advances in the technologies available to enhance police work. In 1996, Mr O'Sullivan was awarded the National Medal of Australia, and three years after that he accepted the Queensland Police Service Medal for Distinguished Service. Jim O'Sullivan has represented Australia at several international law enforcement conferences, including Interpol in Rome in 1993 and New Delhi in 1997. Jim O'Sullivan is regarded as a key figure in the modernising of the Queensland Police Service and restoring community confidence. In recognition of his service to law enforcement and commitment to excellence and reshaping and introducing wide-ranging reforms in the Queensland Police Service, he was made the Companion of the Order of Australia in 2001. It is fitting that Griffith University should honour Jim O'Sullivan in recognition of his distinguished service in the community. Acting Chancellor, it is with the greatest pleasure that I present to you James Patrick O'Sullivan for admission to the degree of Doctor of the University. I now call upon James Patrick O'Sullivan, AC, APM, Doctor of the University, to deliver the occasional address. Your Excellency, the Governor of Queensland, Major General Arneson and Mrs Arneson, the Acting Chancellor of Griffiths University, Mr Henry Smearden, the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Glyn Davis, members of the Griffiths University Council, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly of all, of course, today's graduates. At the outset, may I sincerely thank you, Acting Chancellor Smurden, and members of your council for the great honour you have bestowed on me this afternoon. There are many others to thank, of course. I must mention my wonderful family, but I 
say that I owe everything, if I have achieved anything, to my wonderful wife Adele, who has been with me through it all for 41 years. To be awarded... <laughs> To be awarded an honorary doc doctorate from this institution caps for me what has been a most fortunate life and continues to be so. I would like to share with you, especially the graduates, a few observations of my experience, not because of anything of particular note, but because of the need for all of us to ensure that life's experience is one of continued learning. Learning from our experience, reflecting on our mistakes as well as our achievements, thinking about the way we conduct ourselves and the impact of, of our behaviour on others. Certainly in reference to the Fitzgerald Corruption Inquiry, I always firmly believed that if you don't learn from the mistakes of the past, you will surely repeat them. Sometimes the changes around us are gradual, but sometimes, and the events of September last year have shown us tragically, we realise that the map of the world has changed forever. My beginnings were humble. I was born into a poor working class family shortly before the outbreak of World War II. My parents lived in country towns and in those days schooling was pretty basic in those areas. Attendance at university was really restricted to the well-to-do though it was also the case that very few occupations required tertiary qualifications. The Queensland Police Service I joined in 1959 was a proud organisation, staffed in the main by decent, honest people, though the service itself was poorly funded and lacking in basic equipment. For example, it was quite typical for officers to purchase their own typewriters. You talk about the good old days. I recall I was stationed in Western Queensland at Mitchell in 1960, and throughout summer the temperature exceeded 40 degrees. On arrival I discovered my accommodation consisted of a disused feed room, four by three attached to the cell block. The only equipment supplied was a shearer stretcher. I applied for a refrigerator only to be informed by the commission of the day, if you want one, you should go and buy one. These days, the support provided service organisations such as the police is so much greater. But so are the expectations of the public, though there is quite understandably not necessarily a corresponding preparedness on the part of the taxpayer to increase the funding of essential services. Of course, the accountability requirements are much more complex and demanding, and so they should be. In many respects, but not in all, the process of change and modernisation in our Queensland Police Service resembled that occurring in many other organisations. But where our experience was different was the urgency lent by the revelations of the Fitzgerald Inquiry. That inquiry started out as, as a very limited probe, and initially there was a cynical view that it, like many before it, would go nowhere and many people hoped that would be so. But as we know, it did achieve a great deal, spreading its influence across the body politic of Queensland. In my view, it was a small price to pay, for today we have a totally open and accountable public sector. The trauma to the police service following the revelations of the Fitzgerald Corruption Inquiry was significant, but relatively short term. In addition to weeding out corrupt individuals and practices, the reform process has led to major gains in the professionalisation of the department. In particular, there has been recognition of the role, education and training in overcoming natural conservative tendencies, which in the past might have encouraged a narrowness of outlook and self-interest, but actually an investment in the future. This is because organisations need to encourage in their staff a breadth of understanding about the world, along with ensuring that they acquire and maintain their specialist knowledge. The Queensland Police Service of today is recognised both nationally and internationally as a totally professional, open and accountable law enforcement agency, an absolute must in a democratic society. 
This situation is due in no small way to the quality of the recruits coming into the department. Today, over 65% have first degrees. Most others are studying towards such qualifications. The department is now well equipped to face the challenges of the future, both in terms of day-to-day -day policing and international crime. Because of that reputation, the department attracts serving police as recruits from around the world. The lesson from all this, and the one I convey to our graduates today, is about the importance of lifelong learning, the need for people to remain active learners, recognising that this learning occurs at home and in the workplace, that it occurs in both formal and informal settings, and that it is both personal and professional in its dimensions. At last, the Queensland Police Service has won back the respect and admiration of the community. Its pride has been restored. I feel most fortunate to have played a part in that reform process. Once again, Acting Chancellor Smurden, my thanks to you and your council for the great honour you have bestowed on me today. And finally, graduates, my warmest best wishes to you in your future careers. Thank you very much.